And we come now to zero hour 30 universal time. In the news at this hour, European Union officials say EU members will provide up to 7,000 troops for the expanded United Nations peacekeeping force in Lebanon. UN Secretary General Kofi Annan praised the move. Mr. Annan said European soldiers would form the center of the force, but he says they will not be responsible for disarming Hezbollah. Mr. Annan said that decision should be made during national talks in Lebanon. Italy has said it would deploy up to 3,000 of its troops as early as Tuesday. In Israel, a new opinion study shows that most Israelis want Prime Minister Ehud Olmert to resign. The daily newspaper, Yediat Haranot, published the results of the study. Sixty-three percent of Israelis questioned said Mr. Olmert should resign because of his actions during the war against Hezbollah in Lebanon. A similar study published one week ago showed that 41 percent want Mr. Olmert to resign. The Russian defense minister says he thinks it is too early to talk about United Nations action against Iran because of its nuclear program. Sergei Ivanov also said efforts to settle the nuclear dispute through negotiations should be given more time. The foreign policy chief of the European Union says the EU is seeking new talks with Iran. Javier Solana said the EU wants to better understand the Iranians' answer to an international plan for ending the nuclear dispute. The permanent members of the UN Security Council and Germany offered to help if Iran suspends its uranium enrichment activities. A top United States diplomat is traveling to Sudan to urge the government to accept United Nations peacekeepers in the Darfur area. The Assistant Secretary of State for African Affairs, Jendai Frazier, says she believes a U.N. force will take part in securing the area in time. Before leaving on Friday, Ms. Fraser expressed concern about the security situation in the area. She said an increase in violence is possible in the area if a U.N. force is not permitted to enter. Ms. Fraser says she will meet with Sudanese President Omar al-Bashir during her trip. The World Food Program says it has begun providing food at no cost to hungry people in Niger. The United Nations Agency says the food is meant to help an estimated 650,000 people. The government of Niger will supervise the food aid program. The nation has suffered repeated food shortages. In 2004, a lack of rain and insects combined to wreck crops. That led to a major food crisis in Niger last year. You are listening to the news in VOA Special English. Reports from Nigeria say soldiers have burned hundreds of homes in the city of Port Harcourt. The reports say the soldiers attacked the homes after gunmen killed a soldier during a kidnapping raid. The reports say the soldier who was killed was protecting foreign oil workers at a local drinking place 
At least two foreign oil workers were kidnapped. The Associated Press reports that the Nigerian military has denied responsibility. The military says rebels carried out the attack on the homes. In Nepal, a special committee has presented both government and rebel negotiators with a version of a temporary constitution. The document permits rebels to be included in the government. Home Minister Krishna Sitaula said on Friday that the temporary constitution will be used until a permanent one is written. Rebel leaders are calling for a new constitution that limits the powers of King Gyanendra. The rebels have fought to replace the king with a communist state. In April, rebels entered peace negotiations after weeks of anti-government demonstrations. The protests forced the king to give up complete power. Diplomats from the United Nations and the United States will begin a four-day visit to Thailand on Monday. The visit will deal with ethnic Karen refugees living along Burma's border with Thailand. UN High Commissioner for Refugees Antonio Guterres and State Department official Ellen Sauerbrey will visit the Tam Hin camp. About 9,000 ethnic Karin live in the camp. State Department officials say about 2,500 of the refugees will be sent to the United States by the end of the year. A United States court has sentenced a former Ukrainian prime minister to nine years in prison for stealing and for illegally hiding money. Pavla Lazarenko was also fined ten million dollars. In 2004, Lazarenko was found guilty of stealing millions of dollars from Ukraine and hiding it illegally in the United States. He has been under house arrest since then. Lazarenko served as Prime Minister of Ukraine from 1996 to 1997. He was arrested after asking for political asylum in the United States. And so, briefly now, here again is the major news of this hour. European Union officials say EU members will provide up to 7,000 troops for the expanded United Nations peacekeeping force in Lebanon. The Russian defense minister says he thinks it is too early to talk about possible UN action against Iran because of Iran's nuclear program. And a top United States diplomat is traveling to Sudan to urge the government to accept United Nations peacekeepers in the Darfur area. So ends the news in VOA Special English. <laughs> 